Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mr. Hino with Miss Hino's LEGO Robotics. Today's video, I'm super excited to introduce to you the LEGO Mindstorms EV3 robotic trash can project. If you wanna see what's going on with this, you're gonna to have to stay with me. Okay guys, I'm gonna be the first one to raise my hand, but how many of you have to take out the trash can to the curb, like this? I don't like taking out the trash. I'm gonna be honest, I do not like, you know, I dare not use the word hate, but I really don't like having to take the trash out. You know, when it's raining, when it's cold, when it's windy, when it's just, even when it's sunny, I don't like to take it out. It's just one of those chores where I'd rather be doing other things. I'd rather be washing dishes than taking the trash out. So what we decided in our robotics class is to have a trash can that takes itself out. Now, there's gonna be some issues and situations like, you know, where you you might live, where this might not fit the situation perfectly. Like for instance, my trash cans are behind a gate. So, you know, one of those things where you'd have to figure out, okay, how do we unlock the gate, you know, with this robot. But we're gonna pretend that your trash can is just sitting on the side of your house or wherever you live, and the trash can will take itself out so the trash truck can pick it up. So let's find out more about this project. All right, let's go over the guidelines that I've given to my class. And by all means, you can feel free to, you know, modify this, change whatever you want that doesn't work for you and have it work for your class. So here we go. Um, for this project, the robot must have some type of trash container. Now this one here, they have a container already here, but that, actually could have been their container right here. So you guys in your class can figure out what constitutes a trash can. I basically told them that, you know, we should be able to put, you know, these connectors, axles inside, and it should not fall through. So that's gonna be one of their tests is, you know, when we put trash in, we can't put trash in and have it just fall onto the floor. So their can needs to be somehow modified so that something of your choice you guys can make up what you want black connectors i don't know but it needs to be able to have the trash contained the next thing is the trash can must have a lid all trash cans have lids right so this person or this team modify theirs so the lid goes on top of the trash like that and then the next thing is that their trash can because again we don't have to do the work their trash can must have at least one sensor that triggers the robot to know when to take it out. So obviously if this was reality, we would have some type of timer on our robot so the robot knew exactly when trash day was and it would take it out, you know, the night before. Um, but this robot here, you know, if they, they wanted to, they could have a touch sensor so they can touch the robot and it took itself out. We can use the ultrasonic sensor. I guess if you don't have animals that would walk by your trash can, we wouldn't want your animals to set it off. But, you know, if they wanted to use an ultrasonic, they could, you know, put their hand in front of it and that would activate the trash can to take itself out. Um, they could take this color sensor and, you know, if you had a certain color. So they need to have at least one sensor to trigger the program. And if they choose to, they can have another sensor help guide the robot over to the spot where the trash truck would pick it up. So let's go over to the table so that you can see what I mean by that. All right, so here's the objective of the robotic trash can here. So here's the trash can. Actually, here's one of the trash can that I had a team make. So here is the make-believe house. Here is the driveway. And the objective is for this team, or every team to get their trash can to get to this spot right here 
where the trash truck would pick up the can. So we're going to assume this is the curb right here. Um, I had the line drawn here only for the people that would use their color sensor to line follow. Um, you do not, or I'm not having my students, you know, have to use their line follow. They're just going to need to have a sensor to trigger the program. So this team, if they wanted to, could have, let's say, a touch sensor to trigger their program and then have the color sensor help the trash can line follow. But I'm going to let my students know they do not have to line follow if they don't want to. They can program their robot to just, you know, maneuver over to this spot here. So here is where I'm now going to be giving the students or the teams their grade. If their trash can can make it completely in, so let's get this trash can over here. So if their trash can can completely fit inside of this blue area, and I'm going to consider, you know, I'm going to consider this being in the blue area here, then this would be, um, you know, in our school we have, uh, we don't have traditional A, B, C's and, you know, fails. We have exceeds met, nearly met, and unmet. So, you know, you can kind of um, translate this to your class how you want. But completely in would be an exceeds. Partially in. And actually, let me scratch that word. Mostly in would be a met. Um, if there's more out than in, then this would be a nearly met. And I don't expect any team to just not, you know, be anywhere near the area. But this would be an unmet. So I'm assuming, you know, if a team just cannot get over to this area. But I'm assuming every team's going to be able to at least get partially into this area. So that's going to be how I would score each team's trash can. And then they'll have an evaluation to cover other things like their program, their sensors they used, um, the planning involved, and also, you know, if their trash can had a lid, if the container, you know, is inside. Now, they didn't have to put their trash can inside. This could have been their trash can right here, but they chose to put the can inside. So there is their lid. This time for it. Yes, it was. Yeah. No, it's way too long. Oh. oh! I don't know. I said they got it though. Okay, guys. So this is actually a part one. My students have started on this yet, but we haven't seen a team completely successfully put their can into that spot yet. So that's going to be coming up where I will do a part two and I'll show you how successful or unsuccessful my students were of getting their robot trash cans to the area. So I really like this project because, you know, in robotics, we're always looking for robots to do stuff that we don't like to do. And I don't like to take the trash out. So that's just a neat thing for my students to just be thinking about like, hey, what else do I not like that, you know, one day they can be robotic engineers and create, you know, a robot to do whatever that is they don't like to do. So be looking for part two. That should be coming soon because my students are on this project and they're doing a fabulous job. They just need to now have time to get the robots over to that area. So be waiting and watching, okay? Okay, guys, I'm Mr. Hino from Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. I'm out. He's out. Hey guys, Mr. Hino here. Thank you so much for watching. And if you love robotics, don't forget to check out these videos also because they're cool. Okay guys, take care.